And it's time once again to recommend things. Ready, set, go. I recommend this movie. I can't believe I'm recommending Beyond the Sea starring Kevin Spacey and Kate Bosworth, but I am recommending it. Now I'm going to quickly tie this into geek culture. It stars Kevin Spacey and Kate Bosworth. Dude, the lack of geeky stuff has never stopped you before. Yeah, I know, but I feel like this is interesting. Okay. Kevin Spacey played Lex Luthor. That's true. Kate Bosworth played Lois Lane. That's also true. In the same movie. And in this movie, they play characters who are married. He plays Bobby Darren, and I forget his wife's name. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> now, if, for those of you who don't know who Bobby Darren is, he sang the song Beyond the Sea. He sang Mac the Knife. And uh, he's, he's very popular. I think his most popular song is uh, Splish Splash. Beyond the Sea is, in fact, uh, my favorite jazz song. Really? Mm -hmm. It's my favorite Bobby Darren song. Kevin Spacey sings all of the music in this movie. And that's fascinating. He doesn't necessarily sound like Bobby Darren, but uh, he sounds good enough. In fact, I bought the soundtrack before I bought the movie. Okay, in fact, I haven't seen the movie, but I've listened to the soundtrack like crazy. It's really quite good. The soundtrack is fantastic. And I led a, a, had a former professor who was a, a big fan of Bobby Darren, and he told me about this movie. So I just went and I, I found it. found it cheap. Really, really cheap. In fact, it was a penny. But <laughs> anyway, Hastings deal by so two. Are, so are you recommending the movie only if you can get it for a penny? No. Okay. I recommend this movie because uh, it's an interesting look at at a musical. Now, uh, the craze with musicals nowadays, or at least it seems to me, is you either make a movie about music that came out a while ago. So say Green Day or Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons have a musical out there. Or you make a musical that's really depressing by the end of it. <laughs> and that seems to be the biggest trend for original musicals right now. Is that everything's really depressing. This is a mixture of, of uh, both and what a musical is traditionally. So it's interesting to me to see a trichotomy. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Don't be going all triple, you know, anyway. So, <laughs> I was going to make a porn joke, but I'm going to stop. So, uh, yeah, here we go. The, uh, <laughs> it's okay. But, uh, all right. So, it is a very depressing, because we have the entire life of Bobby Darren. And he ends up dying at the end of the movie, because it's his entire life of Bobby Darren. He dies. Sorry to ruin it for you. But, uh, Vince, you just spoiled... That was a history spoiler. <laughs> Bobby Darren did not die. He's a god. It's a, that was a history spoiler. But uh, they have this interesting mesh ending where they end with a, a, a really upbeat song as opposed to the depressing stuff. And uh, so it's interesting to see that. So it's, it's like a regular or a traditional musical interlaced with an actual movie. So, oh, that sounds horrible to say an actual movie. No, no, it, do, it doesn't actually, because, I mean, musicals are, are traditionally a, a stage kind of thing. Yeah. And so, and so you, you're saying that it's a theatrical film that's got musical elements more than, yeah. right? I mean, we right? have this, uh, it's a musical, you know. It, when you're watching the non-musical parts, you, you feel like this is a movie. But uh, it all goes in one straight line until it gets to the end where it deviates. And suddenly we've seen this uh, interwoven musical and movie go into two separate parts and then we see them interlaced together to where you know you're not going to watch two different screens that's what i'm saying so so it has to be interlaced but it's interesting to see it stop and go it's fascinating i highly recommend this movie it has john goodman in it even i love john goodman if you listen to that one podcast we did then you know i like john goodman <laughs> but uh yes yes i'm a big fan of this old oldies music uh, singer standard jazz, or jazz standard rather music it's it's fantastic I'm telling you this stuff is definitely worth checking out if you don't like musicals it's a decent jumping point or if you don't think you like musicals yeah that's really good today I'm going to uh, briefly recommend uh, the Tick comics uh, the early Tick comics now uh, this is the Tick omnibus this is the Tick in trade yeah it's got a really cool Cool, uh, picture in the back. Um, yeah, th this is uh, the first six, uh, the Tick Omnibus number one. I don't know if you can still get this. I'm pretty sure this is out of print. 
Um, but, you know, you might jump on Amazon and see if you can find it. Um, but uh, they re-release this every so often, I think. Um, but anyway, uh, so this is the first six. Uh, the Tick originally was 12 issues, and then every so often they'd bring it back and do another thing, but it's never been an ongoing monthly. It was 12 issues, and then you had the Ticks back, and you had um, uh, the, 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 the Circus of the Mighty, I think, and a bunch of other things. Um, it, so, uh, so anyway, um, of course, I was mostly a big fan of the Tick on, on television. I was a huge cartoon fan, and um, I, I enjoyed the, the Tick uh, uh, live-action series as well. And um, the comics are different and then not different. It, 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 it just depends. Um, if you watch the cartoon series, uh, you'll see that they borrowed a ton of stuff from the comics. Like, there's a lot of made-up characters in the in, in the in the series, but then there are entire episodes that are that are quite obviously borrowed um, from uh, stories that happen in the comics. And uh, it's neat to see where they uh, where the storylines deviate and stuff like that. Like there's there's stuff that they probably would have done in the in the cartoon show from this if they thought they could get away with it, but it was on Fox Kids, so they couldn't. You know, like they couldn't they couldn't use the Chainsaw Vigilante, because, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> but uh, the Chainsaw... Have you ever seen pictures of the Chainsaw Vigilante? No. He's great, because he's got this uh, he's got this mask, and he's got this smiley face on his man, and he's got a chainsaw. Um, but, uh, but anyway, um, there are other things, too, like... Uh, oh, the, the, the big the big storyline I'm um, starting at the beginning of this is a uh, night of a million zillion ninjas and they didn't do that in the in the cartoon show um, and th and then they've got and then they've got uh, th this this part where um, obviously like a lot of comics they name every issue a different a different story and one of, one of the story titles in this is like um, it's like early morning of a million zillion ninjas and um, the the take take is so much fun and this um, this is like, like, like I said, if you've watched the cartoon in the live action series, you're going to get something extremely different from this because it's more adult. Uh, the live action series was adult in its own way, but like the Tick does stuff in here that he wouldn't do in other places. He swears. There's stuff that he does that that, that you're not that you wouldn't really be used to with the with the more um, you know childlike Tick. Um, this is still like a very you know you know, um, so, somewhat brainless, somewhat confused, airheaded kind of, I have no idea what my past is, I don't even know what species I am kind of tick, you know, that, 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 all, that all is still there, but um, there's, there's a lot more adult type stuff uh, in this. It's all black and white, um, the tick wasn't uh, full color uh, back in the day, but that's part of its charm, and uh, it was mostly um, around to make fun of, um, <laughs> what? There's a lot of ninjas. That's a lot of ninjas. Um, it was mostly around to uh, make make fun of other uh, comics that, at the time. Like um, there is a there's there's a, a girl in this um, who I can't remember her name, but she was she was like an Electra knockoff. And uh, then then there's um, sorry, what was going? Oh, then there's uh, then there's Clark. Um, I think Oppenheimer was his name, and he was he was like he was the uh, the uh, Superman um, knockoff who like would go into a um, who, who would like always try to change costume, but he could never like get into a bathroom and stuff. So he could never he, would, he could never get into his costume. And then um, and, and he pops up briefly in the first episode of the of the cartoon series, but he's like actually um, a, a major character in, in this at least for a couple issues. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, this stuff's this stuff's a lot of fun, and I I, I uh, highly 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 recommend it. Um, so yeah, that's what I recommend. Sweet. And um, we're going to start a new uh, little thing on the um, recommends. We're going to start doing a toy of the week. Uh, we're going to just briefly show you a toy, and um, it'll be our final recommend on recommends each week. Um, today's uh, toy of the week is a um, remake of the Mego uh, Captain Kirk from the Star Trek Mego line from the 70s. Uh, and um, he's got cloth, and uh, he's, he's, he's awesome. I don't get it. How do you connect him to the, all the other Megos? You know, build a little Mego house. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so that is our that is our toy of the week, and these are our recommendations. And thanks a lot for watching. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Vince. We'll see you next time.